Hey guys, welcome to uh, Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. And we are currently in Genesis chapter 4. Now, if you notice, I'm back on doing these kind of the, the live videos. I had been out for a while. I had uh, experienced a uh, an accident. I was I'm a cyclist, so I was... Um, um, I was in a bad accident, that's all I can say, because I really don't remember, and maybe you cannot see some of the scars that are still, uh, I'm sorry, left over, but anyway, that's why I, I you saw a lot of still photos <clears throat> in the past studies, but anyway, so I'm back, feeling a little better, still, you know, not my full self, but uh, enough of that. <clears throat> Now, another thing I want to say is that we're in chapter 4. So, now we're going to begin the journey of man post... We, we already started, but the, the journey of mankind post-sin. Everything now is from this perspective. Now, if you remember, we, we spent a lot of time talking about Adam's fall. But the significance of that fall which was that Adam, who was alive unto God through his spirit, that spirit now is dead. Man, every man after Adam, <clears throat> and as 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I believe it's around verse 22 says, as in Adam all die, meaning they are separated, we are alienated from God. In other words, man exists apart from God. And so now we live according to and by our lower nature, our physical bodies. So this is what we're going to see as we now start journeying through. Now, one other thing that we need to understand as we journey, because chapter four, there are people who have a lot of questions, right? So, for example, <clears throat> uh, was Cain and Abel Adam and Eve's first children? Doesn't necessarily say that, <clears throat> and it's not important, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Um, but the other question would be, um, is um, um, where did Cain get his wife from? Okay, so where did Cain get his wife from? So, um, the reason why I wanted to kind of spend a little time talking about the, this as part of understanding, <clears throat> um, the Bible is not a history book. It was not designed to give a full history. The Bible is designed by God to tell God's story the way God wanted it told. So, saying that, what we see are the interests that God wants to focus on. So we go, if you go back to asking the question, <clears throat> excuse me, was Cain and Abel God's first children? It's assumed that they were because they're mentioned first, but the Bible doesn't teach that. <clears throat> and the other thing is that the reason why is because it's not important because and again, let me say, they could be. Uh, again, the Bible just doesn't say it, and I'll get more into that when we read the scripture. The bigger issue about Cain and Abel is you have two bloodlines, and God is focusing on one bloodline that leads away from him <clears throat> and the bloodline that will lead to Christ. That's the issue right there. In other words, God is only interested in telling that particular story. Having said that, we don't remember in terms of telling it because this is not a full biographical, you know, history and all that. Um, it's it just focused on the, the story itself. We, we don't have a timeline in terms of how long Adam and Eve was here. We, we do in some respect, and I'll get to that in chapter five. However, <clears throat> we're going to see some things that. And this is why, again, I come back and, 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 and raise the issue of whether or not if Cain and Abel are the first. It's just a friendly debate. But I'm going to show you that 
at the time of Cain and Abel, there were already other people on the earth. So we'll get to that. So let's start reading. Um, all right. Adam was intimate with his wife Eve. Now I want to say something about this when it says that Adam was intimate with his wife. Now many of the translations is that Adam knew. And if, and if you remember uh, back then we talked about the word know a knowledge. The word know and knowledge itself means intimacy. It means intimate. It means knowledgeable or experiential knowledge. So when he says that Adam knew his wife, this is a euphemism for they had sex. But it also kind of points out the idea of uh, the relationship between Adam and Eve was more than just conversational and knowledgeable, but that a joining together. <clears throat> okay, my translation here, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, uses... Um, the word intimacy because that's how you would use this word now we'll see this word further down uh, in scripture used the same way it says an Adam was intimate with his wife Eve <clears throat> she conceived and gave birth to Cain and she said I have a male child with the Lord's help now it's interesting that, that Eve would say this because remember she is having painful delivery and then notice she credits God for his help. Now that's kind of interesting there that Eve is crediting God for help, even though she sinned, even though they're they they they're, they're they're living the consequences of their sin, um, that she is still praying or having this kind of relationship with God. Um, and 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 we see that they're not anti-God, as we will see with their sons in just momentarily. We're going to see how anti-God they the human race is already becoming okay um, in just a few short years uh, <clears throat> so it says then she also gave birth to his brother Abel so uh, as I said if you see right here it doesn't say that they were the first and while we could debate about this it's not okay it's not you know neither one could prove to be right or wrong I'm just pointing out, and we will see, I will tell you the reason why I'm of the opinion that they may or may not be the first, because we will see the presence of other humans later. Now, all of this is still kind of, you know, again, I wouldn't debate about this, but it's it just, it just interesting to me conversation on this. The point of Moses writing this under the inspiration of God, we're going to see two different lines one godly and one ungodly and that would be the, the, the importance of this <clears throat> um, verse 2 again then she also gave uh, birth to his brother Abel and Abel became a shepherd of flocks but Cain worked the ground and in the course of time Cain presented some of his land produce as an offering to God and Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portion. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offerings, but did not have regard for Cain and his offering. And Cain was furious and he looked despondent. Now this is kind of interesting here. A couple of things we see here. One, right off we see offerings, this idea of offerings to God. Interesting. Um... Now we are. I think most of us probably know the story here, where this, where this, at least where this story is going. Cain got furious. Here's the question: Why? Now remember, I said right off we see the ungodly line versus the godly line, and even though it's kind of interesting, we see Eve, who though she has sinned, now she is still crediting God as being involved in her life. What we're going to see with Cain, however, is he the, the sinful nature is already taking effect. That he is not a godly person, therefore he is not a good person. In other words, he's living fully out of his sin nature. 
All right. <clears throat> so, uh, verse number six. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It's desirous for you, but you must rule over it. Now, meaning what? Rule over sin, right? Rule over sin. Now, right here, I also want to say that God oftentimes is blamed for a lot of things, right? Especially when it comes to sin. Notice God right now is giving Cain the choice. So first we have to kind of understand some things here. One of the things about Cain that we will see is that Cain, to me, represents man in his personal quest towards God. In other words, Cain is presenting to God what Cain wants to present to God. We know in other scriptures, <clears throat> in Hebrews, for example, chapter 11, the Bible talks about Cain offering his um, I mean, sorry, Abel offering his uh, offering to God um, in faith. Cain didn't. We also know in First John, we know that hatred will drive Cain here. It's driving Cain. But notice the idea that here you see Cain saying, God, this is what I'm giving you. And right here becomes the problem with man. Whether it's religion, uh, we will see later on the organized, where organized religion comes. But right here, understand, and, and, and also understand, um, God is still active here. That Cain is offering God, <clears throat> in a sense, with God's presence avail availing here in other words you know because notice god begins to talk to cain now however god does it it could be angel it could be something but god is talking to angel i mean to cain but notice the sin and this is important now, remember i said we will see from genesis to revelation the sin nature of man that will dominate throughout and you could peel away all of the excuses you know what if you know and, and you know when people say I'm, I'm angry at God or I don't believe in God you could peel away all of these things and really what it comes down to is your sin nature and this sin nature drives man and I could tell you right now that I am horrified I, I, and I am I'm horrified <clears throat> I pray for God's mercy I don't want to have that kind of sin nature. It is this sin nature that caused man to rebel against God. Now, of course, Cain, like Adam, I mean, right? Like father, like son. This is what Adam did. Here you see the sin exposed. Cain wants to offer to God, God, this is my thing. And, and, and a lot of times we do the same thing. In some of our culture today, um, this is one of the things we find today in our culture. Um, I'm a gay Christian. I no, I, I'm I'm not just picking on the LGBTQ, but the, they're the whole Christian gay movement. Though, so if you want to kind of put this into context here, think about this. Here, Cain is offering God an offering. God is talking to Cain. But Cain is still sinning against God. So when we put that today, just peel away all of the nuances, the pretense. I'm a gay Christian. Well, how about this? I'm divorcing my wife. I'm divorcing my husband, but I'm going to get married again. Is that scriptural? Does it matter? I'm offering this to God. Hmm? Um... I'm an adulterer. God has to accept me. I'm a murderer. God has to accept me. We're not, and there's a vast difference in a person who sins 
and then repents for the sin uh, then then what we see here this is to me true Canaanism I'm borrowing the phrase here this is true Canaanism that Cain is offering to God what Cain wants and the sin here is that he's not humbling himself before God right he's not humbling and we're going to see even after this sin he's not going to humble himself before God so God says if you do what is right why are you furious Cain was angry that God did not accept his offering now you know how I feel about this so I'm going but I'm going to say this again and let me be clear that I'm not I'm, going to, I'm not going to represent God that God is merciful when people say I'm angry at God do you really think God cares but he's merciful because God will never ever ever humble himself to man <clears throat> and notice Cain was angry because God refused his offering but you're offering it to God the creator of the universe you're offering it to God so why wouldn't Adam I mean Cain say Lord well then what would you have me to offer I humble myself see right here this is the sin we're going to see throughout the entire Bible as we journey through our study through the whole Bible when people say I'm angry at God are you really angry at God because what because God didn't answer your prayer because God didn't do what you want him to do how about humbling yourself before God you know Lord what would you have me if I say God I want to do something I want to do this and I don't God is not blessing me but God what would you have me to do what is your will See, this is this is Canaanism proper Canaanism obviously I'm going to pick this up guys I'm gonna stop here because I'm going to pick this up in the next study because we're going to go on with this this is very interesting uh, thanks everyone for tuning in I'll see you in the next study All right.